So I'm originally from Raymond, Nebraska, so born and raised in the district that I currently represent in the Nebraska legislature. Uh, I became interested in politics and policy when, when I was about 12 years old. Uh, my grandfather actually ran for the same seat that I hold today. So I knocked on my first door in District 21 in Northwest Lincoln uh, when I was about 12 years old. So I've been talking to constituents, talking to, to my neighbors, uh, family, friends for all that time. Uh, and, I, and I believe that um, we need a younger voice in the Nebraska legislature. Uh, a lot of, it's someone that has went away, went away to school, came back to be closer to friends and family uh, and be that, that voice that is needed to propel Nebraska into the future. Of course, property tax. That's the number one thing I hear going door to door, that our property tax is no longer, our property tax system is no longer an issue. It's a crisis. Uh, we have, I was talking to a, an individual that was on the, that's planning for retirement. Um, and she says, there's no way I can live in Nebraska on a fixed income based on, pro based on property taxes. Uh, so she was looking at moving to Kansas and Missouri. Uh, so we need to do something about property taxes. Uh, it's been a rural, it's been a rural problem for many, for many decades and it's finally creeping into urban Nebraska and becoming a huge issue. Uh, next is workforce. We have a workforce issue in Nebraska. We need to have a common sense approach to how do we have a sustaining and fulfilling workforce, and then also infrastructure needs. Uh, we have roads, bridges, uh, in my community, broadband's an issue. Uh, just 10 minutes away from the capital city, we don't have adequate broadband. So those are my top three issues that I'll be working on if, uh, if fortunate to be elected. Yeah, so we, we need to continue to invest in our property tax relief fund. Uh, we have a spending problem in this state. We need to cut spending, uh, find, make priorities, tighten our belts, and because Nebraskans are doing the same with high, with high uh, increases in inflation in the grocery store at the gas pump, that they're making difficult choices. Government needs to do the same. And so we need to continue to invest in our property tax relief fund and continue to push out relief uh, to, to citizens. But also we need to look at how we um, either a cap on local spending or as valuations go up as they've, gone, they've done in past years, that levy comes down. So it's kind of like a teeter-totter effect of levy, or valuations go up, levy comes down. K through 12, Nebraska legislature made a huge step last year in providing additional funding for K through 12, over a billion dollars and over $300 million in special education funding. That is bringing the investment that the state had in education from a 49th in previous years to now middle of the pack in the country. So we're taking huge investments in, early, in public, ed, public education K through 12. Uh, but also in early childhood education, uh, we're looking at cutting back, rolling back red tape, uh, making uh, tax credits more available for young families. Because as I talked to, to my neighbors in District 21, they said early childhood education is one of their biz, biggest expenses uh, apart from their mortgage. And so we have to do something to provide a, a system where promotes um, families and protects families and makes it, it kind of eases that burden. Affordable housing is a critical issue from expanding our property tax base in Nebraska for workforce. They go hand in hand. If we, if we don't have affordable housing or housing in general, we can't, we can't attract that, that workforce. Uh, so we need to look at, again, cutting back red, regulations of red tape. There was a study done not too long ago that said about 30 to 40 percent of housing costs are by government regulations. And so we need to figure out how to roll those back and, but not compromise safety. Uh, and make sure that we have smart common sense approaches to our housing regulations and that will bring down the cost of housing. Yes, yeah, so, so the legislature passed LB50 not too long ago, I believe it was two years ago, and that was a task force approach with the governor's office, the legislature, and the attorney general's office of how we take a look at criminal justice reform, but also not compromise safety of Nebraskans. Because uh, right, we have a, an overcrowding problem in, in this state, but we need to protect Nebraskans and make sure they're safe um, and take smart common sense approaches. So I, it's actually interesting the question. I, I took a, bar, a bipartisan approach with a, with a Democrat senator from, from Omaha um, on the fentanyl abuse in, or fentanyl overdoses in the state. Uh, so we worked together trying to find a, a, a smart approach to, to help 
alleviate some of the fentanyl overdoses in the state. So we're looking at uh, test strips. We're looking at, uh, it was a mapping to look at uh, where the overdoses occur and then we can uh, allocate resources. And then also the, the fentanyl trust fund that making sure we're getting those allocate, allocated funds to communities and services that need them most. So we have to also look at not only treatment, but also prevention. Those two, th two, two things go hand in hand. Of course, my top priorities are property tax workforce. Um, I'm a small business owner, so some things that impact small businesses are critical to me. But as a state, uh, an elected official and a state senator, we have to tackle some of those social issues. Uh, the, the people in Nebraska are going to have their say on the abortion issue. I did vote for a 12-week limit um, last year because I thought it was a smart, common-sense approach that not only protected women, but also uh, provided carve-outs for exceptions for, for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. So I thought it was a smart, common-sense approach that falls for many Nebraskans are. Um, and then also for the transgender care, um, again, trying to protect children and make sure that they have the resources they need to make an important decision in their life. I've carried um, for the last two years appropriations for the East Beltway. I think it's a critical piece of infrastructure that we need to get done. Uh, we can't wait another 40, 40 years to complete the Beltway around Lincoln and Lancaster County. And it's not just a Lincoln project or a Lancaster County project, it's a Southeast Nebraska project, um, helping with uh, farm to market, helping with safety. I, my community in Waverly, where the East Beltway would end, talk about how they have a safety concern of their, their 16 year olds driving from from the southernmost part of their school district up to Waverly. They have a safety concern. Uh, and so we need to continue to work on that East Beltway because it's critical to the success of Nebraska and Southeast Nebraska as well.